This session is on meanders and oxbow lakes. And all a meander is, is a river bend, and all an oxbow lake is, is a U-shaped lake beside a river. So here at the front of this image, this is the oxbow lake standing separate from the river. Now, um, streams naturally change direction as they flow. It's because they flow with gravity and also because of obstacles in the way that they move around. So if you have a look at this um, little video clip, it shows water crossing a driveway. It doesn't go in a straight line. It's going around obstacles the water crashes into and it's flowing different directions because it always goes um, to the lowest point. Now, um, streams and rivers operate in the same way, so they naturally curve and bend from side to side, like this image that you can see. I want to um, go through next what happens on a river bend. Now, this is the river channel snaking its way uh, down towards the sea, and um, what actually changes the direction that the water is moving is the river banks. So water comes this direction and then it crashes into the river bank here. And the river bank forces it to turn the corner. Um, so the water is crashing around here. It moves across to the other side. And then same again, it crashes into the river bank here and is forced to change direction, moves over to this side of the channel, will hit the river bank, and then moves onwards like so. Now, what that actually means is on the outside of the bends over here, this is where the water is being channeled over to, and therefore there's most water this side of the river bend, and so it is deepest. The water is also moving fastest, and it'll be eroding, it'll be wearing away the riverbank here where it is crashing into. Meanwhile, on the inside of the river bends, well, the water is being transported over to the outside. So there's less water here on the inside, it's going to be shallower, the water moves slower here, and where you've got slow moving water, rocks sink down to the bottom. And so you've got deposition occurring on the inside of the river bend. Now, if we take a quick cross section from point A over here, the outside of the bend, to point B over here, which is the inside of the bend, um, it would look like this. So where A is, um, it is a lot deeper water. And where B is, the inside of the river bend, it's a lot shallower water. So every river bend, the outside of the river bend is very deep. Um, this feature here is called a river cliff. And then the inside of the bend is very shallow. And this gentle slope going down here is called a slip off slope. Erosion on the outside, deposition on the inside. Now, if we look at a real example of this, um, this is the river cliff on the outside. And you can see as the water comes along, it's crashing into this outside bend. It's causing the erosion, the banks are falling in. You can see the mud falling in over here. Meanwhile, on the inside bend, which is over here, lots of gravel is being dropped, which is the deposition. And then this very gentle slope here of which the tree is a part, um, this is the slip off slope. Now, the relevance of all of this is that river bends move, they change position. If we were to come back to this scene in a few years' time, this river bend would have moved over here to the left because of erosion. And if we're continually dropping rocks on the inside, this will have moved um, to this new position in the future. This river bend here will be moving to the right. This river bend over here will be moving to the left, and this river bend here will be moving over to the right. So river bends or meanders continually change position. Now, if we were there in a in an examination and they were saying what is happening at river at meander meander bends, um, this is the sort of thing that we would write. So rivers change direction due to gravity and obstacles. 
the erosion is on the outside of the bend, the deposition is on the inside of the bend, and because of that, meanders change position over time. The next bit I want to move on to is to look at oxbow lakes. Now oxbow lakes form where the river has started curving all over the flood plain and the meander bends are becoming quite extreme. So here comes the water coming down in this direction and it's following the path and um, the channel um, across the flood plain like so. Now where two um, river bends are close to each other, um, the water's coming this way and it's eroding this way towards the other river bend. And if the water comes around this side here, it's going to be coming up and it's going to be crashing into the river banks here, which is causing erosion too by hydraulic action and abrasion. Now, if we come back um, in um, maybe a few years, decades, hundreds of years, the river bends here will have gone closer and closer and closer to each other. And eventually, during a time of flood, rather than taking the route all the way around the edge of the meander, um, during time of flood, when there's more water in the channel, it'll just cut straight across um, the boundary, the join between the two river bends. The future, this area in the middle, and because of deposition on the edge of the river channel, it'll seal up and it leaves this lake standing on its own to the side, which is known as an oxbow lake. Here's a picture again of the real oxbow lake, which has been left separated um, from the river channel. Now again, in an exam, what would you write? Um, you might write something like this. Over time, meanders grow larger due to erosion on the outside of the river bends and deposition on the inside of the bends. This can cause the bends to move nearer to each other. Eventually, the river may take a short cut, cutting across the narrow neck of the meander loop. And this often happens during a flood when there's more water during the channel. Um, there's more water within the channel. It just takes the shortcut rather than going all the way around the meander bend. And then finally, deposition leaves a separated U-shaped lake known, known as an oxbow lake. Sometimes these oxbow lakes, they will dry up and that leaves a feature that's called a meander scar.